God let's, bless him. All let's right. bring it on with some questions. Let's do you it. ready? All okay. Right. This first one, Pat, comes from Vincenzia, who says, I was baptized a year ago in June. My whole body was submerged, but when I came out, I didn't feel any different. You're supposed to feel heat, right? If I didn't feel heat, does that mean the Holy Spirit didn't come upon me? What can I do to receive the Holy Spirit? Um, you're not supposed to feel anything. Uh, supposed to, I mean, it's an act of obedience where yeah. uh, you are, you symbolically die with Christ and you're raised in newness of life, but you're not supposed to feel heat, electricity, or anything else. I've never heard that before. Well, I have me either. I mean, people tell you all these things, um, but how do you receive the Holy Spirit? Well, uh, it's given to those who obey Him, and that's what the Bible says. And I, I haven't time to go through the steps of what you need, but you need to ask, you need to receive, you need to demonstrate, you need to act in faith and so forth. But uh, it has nothing to do with being baptized and, and, and feeling heat. But that is one act of obedience. I, I was baptized again because I wanted to receive the Holy Spirit. And I, I, I thought if that's what it takes, I'll get it done. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. This is James who said in Genesis 126, God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. When God said, let us, who was God talking to? Well, uh, the Trinity, that's, that's what they call the plural of majesty. Like the king says, uh, we have decided that we're going to ask our subjects to do. So it's the plural of majesty. But um, in a, the other way of looking at it, I mean, there's a trinity. There's a Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so that's who could be let us. But whichever, it's either plural of majesty or it's the three persons of the trinity. Right. Okay, this is Deshaun who says, what are some things that I can do to study the Bible better? What things could help me remember Scripture and recite words and their meaning, whether in Greek or Hebrew, so that I can apply them to my life? And also, is hearing the Word of God just as important as laying your eyes on Scripture? Well, you can remember it more, but what you might start doing is just taking a verse and, and just repeating it over and over again until it becomes part of you, mm -hmm. and then try another one and another one. But uh, you, the more you say it, the more it'll stick in your mind. So uh, if you have, <clears throat> you know, I just finished something that I think will be helpful for the people later on. It's not being offered yet, but it will be. I was reading the entire Gospel of John and oh my goodness, when, when you have the dramatic feeling of the dialogue back and forth in that uh, book, it, it'll come through to you. So the fact that if you speak these things out loud, you will, they will stick in your consciousness some more. But just, you know, read them and read them out loud and do it and then read them again and then again and again and again and before long they'll become a part of you. This is Rob who says, I'm a born again young man and I trust the Lord more as my faith grows, but I have been sexually immoral. I also believe that the blood of Jesus has blotted out my sins. I feel like I'm a just man who has fallen more than seven times, but rises back up again in a state of confusion and condemnation. If a person who knew the Lord, but did not rededicate his life to him after a mistake dies, will he die in his sins? Will he be judged resulting in separation from God forever? Oh. I don't think so. I think if you're uh, adopted into the family of God, you're adopted into the family of God. And the Bible says as far as the east is from the west, that's how far he'll take your sins from you. And uh, look look at David, for heaven's sakes. I mean, he's married, he's got all these wives, and yet he looks at the wife of uh, Uriah, and uh, she's taking a bath, and he lusts after her, calls her over to come over to the palace, has sex with her, she gets pregnant, he tries to cover it up, has her husband killed. I mean, it's a pretty story. And he says, restore unto me the joy of my salvation and take not your Holy Spirit from me. So the Holy Spirit was still with David even though he had committed that sin. It displeased the Lord, and his, his temporal consequences were horrible. He had a revolt in his family. His own son tried to uh, kill him. Uh, uh, there was a murder. I mean, it was a mess. But nevertheless, he said, give me the joy back, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Okay? This is Ryan who says, exactly how does someone blaspheme the Holy Spirit? Oh. I haven't got time to go into all that right now. It's, it's Greek aorist tense, which means do it one time, and yet at the same time, it's kind of like, what are you talking about? Uh, it's a very difficult thing, but primarily it means you turn the back on the wooing of the Holy Spirit 
to lead you to Jesus, <clears throat> and you say, I don't want to have anything to do with God or with His Spirit, so leave me alone. Mm -hmm. uh, that to me is the ultimate blasphemy because you, you're turning your back on Him. But I don't think any of you watching this program have done that or want to do that. All right. Okay, this is Alice who says, Once a month we gather as a group with our seniors' gym class to celebrate birthdays. In the past, I've been asked not to pray in Jesus' name when I say grace because there's a Jewish couple in our group. I feel that I'm sinning by not mentioning his name in my prayer. What should I do? Uh, I was asked once as a, a fundraiser, a Republican, uh, to give a prayer. And I prayed, and, and when I got through, I said, In the name of Jesus, amen. So I went and sat down, and this Jewish guy comes up to me. He said, I'm Jewish. I'm offended. I said, well, i tell you what. I'm a Baptist minister. I'm not the chaplain of the Republican Party, and if you don't like what I did, that's tough luck. And he says, oh, and he walked away. Yeah. <laughs> but, Sometimes you have to well, I mean, you know, remind he's, people he's telling that we all me, have freedom. I, to... you know, I can't have freedom to express myself, but I, I quote, offend him. Well, that's tough luck. And I, I, I didn't sign on for that job. I, I'm who I am, and I'm going to be who I am. But sometimes you don't want to offend people. You don't want to, you know, start a fight. You, you don't, we're not contentious. But at the same time, in that case, I was confronted, and that was my answer.